Hi, my name is Mike McGuckin and I'm the senior author of the paper IL-10 promotes production of intestinal mucus by suppressing protein misfolding and endoplasmic reticulum stress in goblet cells. IL-10 is well known as an important regulatory cytokine in the intestine where it can be made by dendritic cells, macrophages, epithelial cells and regulatory T cells. Mice deficient in IL-10 or IL-10 receptor signaling develop spontaneous colitis and humans with similar defects develop severe early onset ulcerative colitis. To date, most of the focus has been on IL-10's ability to suppress leukocyte activation. But in my lab, we are interested in the mucin glycoproteins that produce the mucus barrier to microbes in the intestine. Mucins are large, complex glycoproteins which present a substantial biosynthetic challenge to intestinal goblet cells. An increase in body of evidence has implicated protein misfolding and ER stress in animal models of intestinal inflammation and in human disease. In mice, genetic defects that cause mucins to misfold or defects in the normal unfolded protein response which counters ER stress both lead to intestinal inflammation. In this study, we show that IL-10 primes the ER of goblet cells to promote correct folding and secretion of mucins, even under conditions which would normally cause severe ER stress. I will now hand you over to the first author of our study, Dr. Samira Hasnain, who will take you through our key findings. Thank you, Mike. So in the lab we use the Winnie mice, which have a missense mutation in the MUC2 mucin, which is the major mucin in the intestinal goblet cells. This makes the mucin misfold and accumulate within the ER, which initiates ER stress and the unfolded protein response. To determine the importance of IL-10 in suppressing ER stress, we cross the IL-10 deficient mice with the Winnie mice. Strikingly, the Winnie mice have been sufficient for IL-10 and the IL-10 knockout mice carrying a single MUC2 Winnie allele develop severe inflammation through all the regions of the colon, and you can see the distal colon in this figure. Some of the mice in these two genotypes developed a fatal wasting disease, and only two of the double homozygous mice survived. And these mice were unable to thrive, they developed large colons, and they had severe inflammation in the proximal and distal parts of the colon, and you can see that in the histological figure here. So it's clear that different genes can combine together to drive intestinal inflammation. To explore a possible direct effect of IL-10 on ER stress, we next neutralized IL-10 receptor 1 in the Winnie mice. Within 96 hours of IL-10 receptor 1 neutralization, the Winnie mice lost 25% of the body weight. And you can see in the histological sections here, there was a significant loss of goblet cells in the distal colon. However, MUC2 precursor antibody revealed that goblet cells were present and there was misfolded MUC2 accumulating within the ER. And you can also see that there's an increase in ER resident proteins GRP78 and IRE1B cell within the ER. Next, we utilized an in vitro model of intestinal goblet cells, the LS1 and 4T cells, to determine whether IL-10 can directly suppress ER stress. We did this by transfecting the LS1 and 4T cells with the IRE report assessment, which allows the monitoring of ER stress by our IRE1 endonuclease induced fluorescence. IL-10 alone did not affect the splicing of XPP1. However, IL-10 directly suppressed tunicomycin induced XPP1 splicing in a dose-dependent manner. Tunicomycin is an n glycosylation inhibitor that induces ER stress. To determine the mechanism by which IL-10 suppresses ER stress, we analyzed mucin biosynthesis. The immunofluorescence microscopy shows here that there's an accumulation of MUC2 precursor and a loss of mature MUC2 in the tunicomycin treated cells, which was prevented by IL-10. We analyzed the mucin proteins by agarose gel electrophoresis western blotting, using the precursor and mature MUC2 antibodies. Tunicomycin induced MUC2 protein misfolding, which formed an aggregate that does not enter the agarose gel under non-reducing conditions. And this is accompanied by the loss of mature MUC2 production. So overall in this paper we've shown that IL-10 via the R1 receptor induces the transcription of STAT1 and STAT3, which results in the induction of MUC2 mRNA. It also increases the expression of 
ER resident chaperones, such as AGR2, which can improve the ER condition, allowing correct protein folding, while maintaining the ER-associated degradation pathway, where MUC2, which is misfolded, can be targeted for degradation. Therefore, IL-10, even under adverse conditions, allows the continued production of MUC2, which is a critical component of the intestinal barrier. Thanks, Samira. Hopefully we have convinced you that IL-10 has a previously unrecognised important role in promoting the production of the mucus barrier which separates the intestinal microbes from the mucosal epithelium. Thanks for your attention.